In this lecture, we are going to learn about the first angular life cycle hook, which is NG on changes life cycle hook. So in the last lecture, we learned that the angular life cycle hooks are the methods that angular invokes on a directive or a component when it creates changes and destroys them. So one of the life cycle hooks is this NG on changes life cycle hooks. And we are going to talk about it in this lecture. But before we talk about NG on changes life cycle hook, Let's first briefly understand what is change detection cycle in Angular and what it does. The change detection cycle in Angular is a mechanism by which Angular keeps the view template in sync with the component class. For example, let's say in the view we have this div and inside this div we have this literal text hello and using the string interpolation syntax we are using this name property of the component class. So we have seen this that whenever the value of the property which we use inside this string interpolation syntax, whenever it changes, that change is immediately reflected in the web page. Right. So in this case also, when the value of this name property will change, that change will be immediately reflected in the web page. But how does Angular know that the value of the name property has changed? For that, what Angular does is it runs a change detection cycle on every event that happens on the DOM and in also some other special scenarios which may result into a DOM change. For example, Angular runs the change detection cycle whenever the input property of a component class changes. It also runs the change detection cycle whenever a DOM event happens, for example, click event or change event. Then the change detection cycle also runs whenever the timer event happens using set timeout or set interval function. And the change detection cycle will also run whenever we make an HTTP request. So these are some scenarios in which Angular runs change detection cycle. And Angular also raises the life cycle hooks during the critical stages of the change detection mechanism. So in the last lecture, we learned that the life cycle of a component begins when the component class is instantiated by calling the constructor of that component class. And the life cycle of the component ends with the destruction of the component class. Now, in the last lecture, we also learned that constructor is neither a lifecycle hook nor it is specific to Angular. It is a JavaScript feature. And we also learned that when the constructor is called, by that time, the component's input properties are not updated yet. Also, the child components of that component, they are not constructed and the projected contents are also not available in that component yet. All these things will happen after the execution of the constructor is complete. So once the component class is instantiated, the Angular life cycle begins. And the first hook which we can use to execute some logic during the Angular life cycle is ng on changes life cycle hook. This ng on changes life cycle hook this gets executed at the beginning when a new component is created and its input bound property is updated. And it also gets executed whenever the input bound property of the component changes. Let's try to understand these two statements with an example. So, in order to understand ng on changes lifecycle hook, inside this Angular lifecycle hook project, I'm going to make some changes. First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this paragraph element inside a div so that I can apply some style on it. Let's add a class on this div. Let's call it demo. And now let's go ahead and let's open the CSS file for this demo component class. And in there, I'll go ahead and I will add some CSS for this demo CSS class. And in order to save some time, I have already written some CSS. So it is a very simple CSS. I will simply copy it and I'll use it here. Another thing which I'm going to do is in the app component, I will move this button element before we are calling this app demo component. And then I also want to have an input element here of type text. So if I go to the web page, the UI will look something like this. So here we are basically rendering that paragraph which says this is demo component. Now instead of showing this content, what I want is I want to change this content. So again, I will go to demo component.html and here let me say message. And then here I want to use the message property of this demo component. So let me close this demo component.css. Let's go to 
demo component.ts file and in there we have this message property which is an input property so there i want to use this message property okay and let me open that demo component class again and here i will simply set it to empty string initially or maybe i will not assign it at all because it is an input property it should be assigned from the parent component right now we are binding this message property in the parent component so if i go to app component.html there you will notice that we are binding that message property with this value hello world now here instead of binding a hard coded value what i want is in the app component i want to create a property i'll call it input well it is going to be of type string and initially i will assign it with empty string okay and inside this input well we want to store the value which the user will enter inside this input element and i only want to assign that value when this button is clicked so let's go back and first of all what i will do is let's go to app component.html and here let's change the button name from show height to maybe submit okay and on this button element i'm going to bind click event and when this click event will happen i'll call a method on btn clicked you can name this method anything okay and here what i want is when this button is clicked i want to pass a reference of this input element to the component class for that on this input element i'll use a template reference variable i will simply call it input el and I will pass this input EL as a parameter to this onBTN click method. And let me copy this method name and let's go ahead and let's create it inside this app component class. Okay, and here we are going to receive the input element, a reference to the input element. I'll call it input EL and it is going to be of type HTML input element. And in here I'll say this dot we have this input well property equals in this input el we are going to receive a reference to the input element that input element is going to have a value property okay so all these things we already know from our previous lectures now as soon as we have the value inside this input well property what i want is i want to pass that value from this app component to this demo component and i want to assign that value to this message property for that since this message property is an input property and we are already binding it in our app component as you see here we are binding this message property so now when we are binding that message property to that we want to assign the value stored in the input well property so i'll go ahead and i will assign it here With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And here we have this paragraph message. Now, whenever I type something here and when I click on the submit button, that should be displayed here. So our application is working as expected. Now here, let me reload the page and let me go ahead and let me open developer console. Okay. So in the console, first you will see that app component constructor called. So we added this log message in our last lecture. Then we also see demo component constructor called. So the demo component has been called here. Then we see the value stored in this title property logged. And then we are also logging the message property in the constructor. But for that, it has logged undefined. That's because if I go back to VS code and if we go to demo component.ts, initially we are not assigning any value to this message property so initially undefined will be assigned to it and by the time the constructor gets called by that time this message property will not be updated with the value which we are passing for it from the parent component so that's why it is going to log undefined and that's what you will see here okay now after the constructor is executed after that at some point of time this message property which is an input property it will be assigned with the value which we are passing for it from the parent component so it will be assigned with the value stored in this input well property and when that happens then the ng on changes lifecycle hook gets called so if we 
specify this ng on changes lifecycle hook it will get called when the message property will be initialized with the value which we are passing for it from the parent component now this ng on changes and it should be ng on changes this is provided by an interface called on changes so what we can do is we can implement that interface here for that we can use this implements keyword and we can say on changes in order to use this on changes interface we need to import it from angular slash go now it is not mandatory to implement these interface we can directly go ahead and directly use this ng on changes but since these lifecycle hook methods they are defined by some interface it's a good practice to implement it for that component class all right now what we learned this ng on changes lifecycle hook will be called whenever this input property of the component class will be initialized so when it will be initialized with the value basically this value stored in this input well at that time this ng on changes lifecycle hook will be called so here if i go ahead and if i log this dot message and let me also log ng on changes hook called okay with this if you go to the web page you see ng on changes hook called and at this line it is logging empty string it is not logging undefined because by the time this ng on changes lifecycle hook has been called by that time it has been assigned with the value which we are passing for it now what value we are passing for it we are passing the value stored in this input well property and initially this input well property it is assigned with empty string so that empty string has been logged here so ng on changes will be called for the first time when the component will be rendered in the web page and its input property is initialized okay and then it also gets called every time this input property will change let's also see that so if i go back to the web page and if i type something here let's say abc and when i click on the submit button this abc will be assigned to this input well property and then we are assigning that value back to this message property so in this case this message property will change and since this message property is an input property when its value will change it will call the ng on changes lifecycle hook so when i click on this submit button you see the value of message property changed and since the value of message property changed it called this ng on changes lifecycle hook and it is also logging the value which is stored in that message property if i say xyz here and if i click on the submit button again the value of the message property will change since it is an input property it will call the ng on changes lifecycle hook and we are also logging the value stored in the message property now if you want to check what was the previous value for the input property and what is the current value of the input property what you can do is this ng on changes it also takes a parameter you can name that parameter anything i'll simply call it changes and it is of type simple changes okay and in order to use this simple changes we need to import it from angular slash go so we can also go ahead and instead of logging this dot message now what i will do is i will log this changes let's save the changes let's go to the web page okay so here these messages are from the constructor in the constructor the value of message property is undefined after that once the message property is initialized with the value this ng on changes lifecycle hook has been called and the changes parameter has been logged here now when we are logging the changes parameter it is logging an object in that object we have a property with the same name as the input property so our input property name is also message so with that same name a property has been created inside this object and if i expand that there we have the current value so current value is empty string previous value is undefined that is correct and this is the first change because here this component has been rendered for the first time so this is the first change but now if i go ahead and if i change the value of message property let's say demo and if i press on this submit button demo has been logged here the value of the message property will change 
so because of that this ng on changes lifecycle hook has been called and this changes parameter has been logged here if i expand this and if i expand this message property you will see that the current value is demo and the previous value is empty string so in a very simple term the ng on changes lifecycle hook will be called whenever the value of an input property of a component will change now the ng on changes hook is not raised if the change detection cycle does not find any change in the input properties value let's try to understand this with an example so here the current value of message property is demo okay now when i click on this submit button a change detection cycle will run and when the change detection cycle will run it will compare the current value and the previous value of the input property and if there is no change in the current value and previous value of the input property in that case this ng on changes hook will not get called only when the current value and previous value are different then only the ng on changes life cycle hook will be called let me actually show you that so when i click on this submit button now the change detection cycle will run but you will notice that no ng on changes life cycle hook has been called here we do not see this message ng on changes hook called logged here so it has not called that ng on changes life cycle hook but if i change the value here in that case the current value is demo one previous value was demo in that case there is a change between the current value and the previous value so now when i click on the submit button you will see that ng on changes hook has been called so keep in mind that the ng on changes life cycle hook it gets executed at the very beginning when the component is created and its input property is updated it also gets called every time when the value of the input property changes but if the input property has not changed when the change detection cycle is running it is not going to call ng on changes life cycle hook so this is all about ng on changes life cycle hook if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day